Brad, what's going on, man? I feel like Framster here. Tesla truck unveil, a cyber truck unveil. Is he your new favorite dude? Dude, he is because you know what? I was rewatching the tape back, and not only was this thing like phenomenal, it was built for 2019, which has been the memeiest timeline. But it, it, he's the one who suggested throwing the ball again after breaking the window. I think he did it on purpose, man. What? Yes. You think there's a stage? It's like, like, yes, I do. I think it, it's like, that's how you break the internet. You do something like you break a window at a reveal. <laughs> like you literally break it? Yeah. But Elon, Elon, like, he seemed just as shattered as that window. Good. Yes, after- he's a good actor. You think that, you think the whole thing was just <laughs> acting? Yes. Yes, I do. I think that. Uh, this is a publicity stunt. We're talking about do you, it. So you do you think this is the? It's really an angry polygon. Do you think it's really like a pyramid on wheels, <laughs> or they're gonna come out with an actual like thing that looks more like a truck? Well, I, I think that if I lived in a Minecraft inspired world, I I would probably buy one at the seventy k price point, or like the Road Warrior. You know, yeah. But but since I don't, you know, since I kind of go around dropping kids off and you know and driving huh. the narrow streets of Chattanooga, yeah, I, I would think that it would be kind of like driving a something of a tank. I, I don't know. Maybe it's not as wide as it looks. The lift gate looked really heavy yeah. when he was trying to open that thing. But apparently it goes from zero to 60 in like two seconds. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the advantage of electric vehicles. But if yeah. you look at the other Teslas, they at least look like they were from like this universe. <laughs> I, I kind of dig. I may be in the minority. Yeah. I kind of dig. It, it, you know, it's like it, it harkens back to... I don't know, Knight Rider a little? A little. I mean, it's just, it has like, it's the only car that's uh, that has fewer, I don't know, like the Aztec, the, like Walter White's Pontiac Aztec had, uh, had more poly- curves than polygonal. this. Polygonal. It is. It looks like like PS1 graphics you or say, something. Did you say polygonal or polygonal? polygonal? I would say polygonal, but I think it's polygonal. 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 I think that would be the right way to say. It, only a $100 deposit. I think yeah. I might just put one down just for the heck of it and see if these like go up in demand. But you still have to come up with a 70K. No, I know that. But, like, I felt like I should have done that with the last Tesla because if you just put, like, the, like a couple thousand on it, they were reselling for a ton of money. So, like, you could get into, like, the whole market. Of, oh, like, the deposit. I, I, look, I saw sort the of Wolf. like reselling I, your tickets to the concert. I saw the Wolf of Wall Street at Freight Waves Live. Maybe I'll just take people's deposits and I'll be like, you give me that. I'll reserve the truck for you. Wow. And then you'll have your own. You have own learned well. Tri- Jedi. Triangle truck. You know what we got to do? We got to pay $100 in order oh. to, uh, to reserve that truck. Yeah, yeah. we do. We got to pay the bills. This episode is brought to you by truckstop.com, the world's most trusted load board. Want to find the best carriers at the best rates? Yes. Of course you do, Chad. Why would you want to find the worst carriers at the worst rates? <laughs> I, I, I said yes. You want to see market data. You want to build relationships and grow your business, and you can do that with truckstop.com. Visit truckstop.com today for more information. Wow. True story. The more you know. <laughs> oh, hit us with some oh, headlines, Oh, man, Ohio logistics firm, they're on the hook for a th- $300,000 lobster heist. What? <laughs> lobster. Lobster mind. Purloined lobster. Yeah, so what happened here is they they, they failed to thoroughly vet a, sub, a, sub, a subcontractor. A driver who allegedly disappeared with a pricey load of lobster is going to cost this Ohio logistics company 300 k U.S. District Judge in, in, Indira Talwani ruled on November 19th that Seneca Logistics Group LLC, based in Tiffin, Ohio, is on the hook. Is that a pun? They're more like in a cage. Yeah, trap. I think it is. He's in the lobster trap for the never-recovered load after agreeing to haul it. It had been outsourced the job to Rapid Logistics Services. A truck driver for Rapid, Ernesto Perez, allegedly stole the load of crustaceans. He was just gone, man. Gone in 60 seconds with 60 lobsters. Authorities were subsequently unable to track down Rapid or Perez. <laughs> they, he didn't name himself Rapid for nothing. But the plot boils, right? R- Richwell Group Incorporated doing business. You got There's a lot of names here. Yeah. Richwell Group Incorporated doing business as Maxfield Seafood, a Los Angeles-based seafood supplier, sued Seneca in August of 2017, seeking to recover lost profits stemming from the purloined load after the Ohio logistics firm agreed to pick up the savory cargo at two cold storage facilities in Massachusetts in December 2016. The story goes way back. It's got legs. Without (laughs) Maxfield's knowledge, Seneca then retained another party to transport the lobsters. The lawsuit alleged in court documents filed 
in U.S. District Court in Boston, of all places. Of course, man. Where else are you going to get lobster from? Yeah, I mean, it's it's the Maine, it's the too. Play. Maine, Maine's got some <laughs> The lobster. seafood supplier claimed Seneca made no effort to vet Perez's or Rapid's background or credentials to ensure the load would be delivered as promised. As By the way, uh, lobster, yeah. lobster friends, we got you up on the LinkedIn over here, so if you leave some comments where you're from, more than happy to shout you out. And how do you like your lobster? Do you well, like it? Uh, did like you know butter? that lobster used to be considered the the rat of the sea? I still consider it that. <laughs> you it's do. Like a giant bug. I don't eat. No, uh, I don't eat lobster. No, I don't have eat you ever food. have you ever read uh, "Consider the Lobster" by David Foster Wallace? No. If you read it, you'll never you'll never eat another lobster again. Well, here's the thing. Seneca fired back. They said it was uh, it was a broker, not a carrier, and wasn't responsible for the stolen lobster. However, the judge disagreed, stating that because Seneca took responsibility for the shipment, it was a carrier, even though it subcontracted with another trucking company to haul the load. So we had oh. I had Cassandra Grains on Freightways Insider. She's been on What the Truck before. Check out this week's. Great Waves Insiders to find out the other yeah, things, the great. legal trouble and the liabilities that you have. I bet there's a lot of things you don't know, people. Freightcast, follow it, or, or Freight Waves Insiders. You could be a walking liability. On your favorite podcast player of choice. There wasn't another, so here's what they said. There wasn't another carrier involved that Maxfield could have pursued for its losses because effectively what Seneca did was give all of our clients information to a criminal individual or enterprise who showed up to pick the loads. It was this fake shadow company, and he just took the lobsters and, and crawled away. Rapid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so in another headline. This one is not nearly as fun. No. Parents of a girl killed in a truck gra- crash sue the driver and the motor carrier. The parents of a nine year old girl killed earlier this year in a tractor trailer crash on Interstate 95 in Delaware have filed a federal lawsuit against the truck driver and the Memphis based motor carrier. Linda. Asamoah and Patrick Awusu of Newark, Delaware, filed suit in U.S. District Court in Wilmington in mid-November against J&J Express Incorporated of Memphis and its truck driver, Brian Keith Winningham, 39, of Fairmont, North Carolina. Court documents allege that Winningham failed to stop during rush hour traffic on September 24th and rear-ended three vehicles including the SUV driven by Asamoah, forcing them off the road before his 2014 Kenworth hit a guardrail and overturned. Yeah, and the sad thing here is that Rosalind, she died, and Asamoah was permanently paralyzed in the crash during the lawsuit. The suit alleges that Willingham was negligent because he failed to control the speed of his vehicle or apply his brakes in a timely manner to avoid the collision. It also claims he failed to take time to properly evade hitting them in proper evasive action. Another one that's not so great, it's another strike. We never like to hear about these. CN strike rattles uh, Canada's supply chain. Feared heating fuel surcharges in, uh, f- there's feared heating fuel shortages in Quebec. Brutal freight conditions in Toronto and layoffs. At a Halifax auto shipper adds the gestating impact as talks between Canadian national teamsters continue. We had our own strikes here where a lot of auto workers lost their jobs as well. Right. Uh, as the fallout intensifies, the pressure will Mount on Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to reconvene Parliament early to legislate the CN workers back to the job. If the strike lasts until the next parliamentary session on December 5th, TD economist Brian DePrado and Derek Burleton projected the Canadian economy could lose $3.1 billion Canadian dollars. For now, CN and officials from the Teamster Rail Conference, the union representing the conductors, Train persons and yard workers remain in federally mandated contract talks. Working conditions and benefits appear to be sticking points with the Teamsters demanding remedies for what they consider unsafe working conditions, Dooner. Yeah, and the Teamsters said that binding arbitration was a non-starter. Spokesperson Christopher Monte said the union was sympathetic to fears over the effects of the strike in the supply chain economy. They said we understand the economic issues. Ultimately, we don't think anyone should die trying to transport propane. There's other stories on Freightways.com. Read all the great ones. There's one here about regulators waiver on autonomous, autonomous vehicle crash safety that we thought was interesting. But we have to go to a call now to uh, Jason Eversall from Four Kites, a product. What is he, director of product management over there? Yeah. Let's get him. Let's get him on the line. He's a fascinating individual. <laughs> Five, count of five, five, two minutes. Hey, Jason, are you there? I'm there. <laughs> hey, Jason, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, we don't have a great connection. Let's see if we can keep making this happen. Yeah. How's that? Oh, that's better. Much better, much better. 
You know, we, we, were, uh, we were doing a little research on you on LinkedIn, and uh, we found out that you're your Vern- University of Wilmington Seahawk in a William and Mary tribe, and uh, we found that interesting because at Freightways, we call ourselves a tribe. Well, hey, I would fit right in there. You would. That. <laughs> you guys are in Chicago, right? Four Kites? Yeah. Yeah, we're based out of downtown Chicago. I live in Charlottesville, Virginia. So, um, Beautiful place. For, yeah, it's a great spot. Did you manage so, to get up to uh, Freight Waves Live? I was. I did. I had a great time up there. Met uh, met a bunch of you guys. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of different vendors up there, and uh, it was it was good to uh, to really just get to know the peers and the, the group. You have a very interesting background. You managed uh, the aeronautic operations for the largest helicopter airport on the East Coast. What's something about helicopters people don't know about? Oh man, you got H fifty three, H forty six, is UH one. It was a Marine Corps uh, base, so. Mm. It was the Marine Corps for a while, air traffic controller, and that's kind of how I got my start. So, Wow. Well, we're getting into the weeds on helicopters. Who knew? You yeah. also you envisioned and managed the uh, implementation of the first ever supply chain model for Smithfield Foods. Uh, hey, what's happening? Oh, Jason, we, we have, have a special a- guest in the booth, too. It's uh, We're right. online with Jason Eversall from Four Kites, and now we have... Craig Fuller and his... Uh, well, I just want to say hi. How, how, hi, how Craig are Fuller. Okay. <laughs> and Henry Mills Fuller. <laughs> yes, Henry Mills. Uh, so, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, but so you envisioned and managed the implementation of that first ever supply chain model for Smithfield Foods that optimized manufacturing through distribution to customer. Tell us about that. Yeah, it was a big project. We you know, consolidated a bunch of different companies and... Uh, you know, a lot of optimization modeling to figure out what should be made where, where distribution should uh, exist, all that kind of stuff, how, how to ultimately deliver it to the customer. So um, that was the role. It was a pretty big project for, for us at that time. Hey, so you were at Freight Waves Live. You probably saw those Freight Tech Awards. Four Kites was eighth in this year's Freight Tech 100. Wow. To, to quote Darth Vader, most impressive. So what is uh, Four Kites up to and what's good with you? Well, what we're up to is really just trying to make supply chain more efficient, really. You know? So we, we think that visibility is kind of the underpinning of a lot of that. Um, we've got a pretty good density in that right now with you know 383 um, customers that, that are using us. And so it's now it's to the point where we can start doing like some of the cool stuff that, that the visibility enables us, like you know appointment managers. We launched an appointment manager a few weeks ago or a couple months ago. That's getting rolled out to several large um, shippers and and retailers here in the next month. Uh, the cool part about that is, you know, when you're when you're visible and you know the trucks are coming, you know the guy that arrives early and today you can't get unloaded. This is the stuff that enables that dynamic rescheduling that just flips you with, um, you know, somebody that's coming in late and uh, and just gets you on the road quicker. So those are the types of things we're doing. We're really working with a lot of these shippers. Um, on figuring out what is the root cause of, of wait time and resolving those problems. I don't know if you guys saw the uh, Grocery Manufacturers Association research that we did with Wegmans and Giant Eagle, Land Lakes, Coca-Cola, some of these big companies that um, really focused on getting this dwell time down. And hopefully, I know that's important to drivers. Last hour, research oh, yeah. I read, you know, 78%, I think, was the number out of the OIDA group that uh, – 78% lost the load a month equivalent in, in excessive you know wait time. So those are the things we're trying to tackle. Is yeah, some you, of your uh, DNA from Smithfield Foods being injected in there, dealing with these sort of grocery wait times and, and having some knowledge and some background in that? Yeah, I think it helps for sure. You know, I've been on the carrier side and on the uh, on the shipper side, so I kind of see it from both both angles. So it, do, it does help. You know, both both sides of it have points that the other doesn't know. And, um, try to inject that where I can. Yeah, well, we had declared the war on. Well, we declared the war on detention in 2018 here at Freight Waves. We were fighting. Winning. We're well. It did look like things were trending definitely in the direction of the carriers, and we were talking about shipper of choice and everything. But of course, uh, then you know, 2019 came around, and it seemed like maybe a little bit more of the same. But that's great that you are helping. Uh, you know, with uh, making making that happen, bringing dwell times down. Thanks for fighting the good fight. Uh, what's something you wish that uh, people knew more about four kites? I wish they all knew that we're not in the business of becoming a broker. That's the uh, 
Okay. So you get some resistance. People think you're kind of a competitor or a threat, and you you, yeah, I mean, you have to educate you know, people you're not. Yeah, I think that's out there. You know, we certainly, you know, we have relationships with a lot of shippers. And if I was a broker, I would think the same thing. You know, you got relationships with carriers, you got yeah. relationships with shippers, and you're in the business of data, you know. But the way we look at it is, uh, you know, we got a place for everybody to play in the four types network, whether you're an asset carrier, a broker, a shipper, whatever you are. And we think we can provide value for all those types of groups. Jason, um, yeah. So- well, you guys, you guys, Jay, Jason Eversol, you guys are connecting all points of the supply chain. It's great to connect with you. How do you make yourself visible to everybody? How do people find you when they reach out to you, Jason? So I'm on LinkedIn. You can find me there. Um, not too much on Facebook, but LinkedIn's my, my gig, I guess. Great. Well, fantastic. We'll find you there on LinkedIn. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Jason. It's fun. It was great talking yeah, with you. you. Have a thanks, nice weekend, Jason. man. Take it easy and have a great holiday. Yeah, you're Bye. All right. All right. Now it's time to get into our DHL supply chain freight waves pricing power index. See what's going on there. See if that little meter, the one that we're at zero, it goes towards the shippers. And when it's 100, it goes towards the carriers. That's moving any closer to 100. I'm not sure if we have good news here, though. Andrew Cox joins us from the Freight Wave Research Team. He's also a contributor to the new podcast on the Freight Network. Freight is called Freight Although I don't think you're on the most recent episode that came out this morning. Nice to have you in the truth booth. Thanks for having me. Yeah, talking PPI. I was not on Great Quarter Guys this week, mm. uh, but last week was. Yeah. I don't know about next week. I think you'll be back. I think so. I'll advocate for you. I'm kind of the producer. I can make that I happen. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put nice. him back on there. Well, you know, one of the things we're trying to do, you guys are very high level, whether it's on, you know, whether it's on great quarter guys or whether it's just talking about this pricing power index. Oh, could you tell me, how do you say the whole thing again? DHL supply chain freight waves pricing power index. Thank you. Wow. That was really good. Uh, So, but what we're going to try to do here in this special segment is you are going to talk to me as if, well... You know, I really do function at a fifth grade level, Mm -hmm. and you're going to talk to me so that I can understand you, Andrew. I'm going to do my best. uh, (laughs) We're going to break it down. Chad had been complaining after shows. He's like, what did that guy just say? What did that man just tell me? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, all these technical things. I think we can do better. Okay. Where do you want to start? Well, the power. What is it at? Let's start with the number, right? So where is the the power trending? Who's got the power? The trended further in direction of the shippers. It now Mm -hmm. sits at 15. Mm Mm-hmm. Out of 100. So yeah. zero would be complete power for the shippers. 50 would be an equal market, and 100 would be all the power to the carriers. Seems like bad news this time of year. For the carriers, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Do you have, like, a superhero comparison that we could Ooh. think about? Like, where the where's the krypton? I don't know. Um, well. Uh, I'll get one prepared for next week. We'll, oh, have a, okay. we'll have a good one there. <laughs> all right. So the power is in. The good guys' hands or the bad guys? Well, I guess that depends on the lens. <laughs> yeah, I guess through. that depends on who you are, right? <laughs> right. Okay. That's the existential question of who uh, should be in power in freight, shouldn't it? It is. Yeah. We, you know, in we a, like per- in in the a perfect market, we'd like to be at fifty. Yeah. Right? The middle yeah. of the curve, especially for us, is like, like uh, that's nice. I, I'm like when I was in a four PL, that was a great position too. And I was in a three PL. These kind of markets are, are very difficult to be in. Mm-hmm. Extremely. Uh, and yeah, we would want the power to be in both people's hands, but it's not the case. Currently. A balanced market. Okay. So what's the reason? Why why are we not seeing it? Because it was at twenty. You know, it's it was. I think we got as high as forty at some point. We did. I think we started uh, about two months ago at forty, uh, maybe even forty five, and we've just steadily fallen. Week Cascaded, after week. right? And then yes. occasionally it's held at like twenty five. It held for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Fell to fifteen, and it fell to twenty. Held for two weeks, for and now it now fell to fifteen. It fell again uh, for a couple reasons. One, uh, and we'll try to break these 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 indicators down are, are volumes, right? So the amount of volume moving in and out of a, of a market. And we use the overall national index as our gauge uh, for this gauge. And right now, volumes did po- pick up from last week. They're up like 5% off the bottom last week. But uh, it, it's a very similar trend as we had last year. It's a kind of a, a typical thing for volumes to, to rise right before Thanksgiving as shippers and carriers alike try to prepare for uh, the off days of the holiday. So Yes, the volumes are up 5%, but it's nothing out of the ordinary. It's kind of uh, expected. You know, one of the uh, one of the tickers that we use is the outbound tender rejection index that we refer to commonly as the OTRI. Can you explain what that is? I can. 
Thanks. So rejects are a carrier's willingness to accept a load, and those loads are tendered electronically on the Internet. So uh, let's say, let's give for example, there are four loads in the country, and two of them have been accepted, and two of them have been rejected. That would give us an OTRI, an O-T-R-I of yes. 50%. Uh, and it's really a kind of a quasi-indicator and a, a measurement for capacity in a market. Okay. So uh, given that it, we, we have had a little bit of increase, and when we say when the OTRI is increasing, we call it a tightening market, a tightening capacity. Yeah. Uh, and, and the opposite is true. If it's falling, it's a loosening, a loosening market, loosening capacity. And so this month it went up 18%. Is that uh, typical? Is that unusual? What is that? What's, what's that mean? It's good news for the carriers, but again, it's kind of like volumes in that it's expected and, and, and very typical uh, okay. leading up to a holiday season like, uh, like Thanksgiving where you have uh, multiple days off. You see capacity tightening as some truckers get off the road and they don't want to be driving near the holiday uh, and vice versa. You have some loads not being tendered because shippers are shut down. But very typical for it to rise. It rose almost exactly 18 uh, percent from November 1st to Thanksgiving last year. We are measuring rates now, right? We're, we're measuring rates with our own proprietary mm -hmm. uh, approach. Um, how are rates right now? I know it's been a tough year, 2019, for carriers. For the carriers, the rates are in the bin. They are yeah. not good. I mean, the good news is that it can't go much lower because we're right there at that kind of normal operating cost per mile for, for carriers to run their trucks. Uh, so they, they can't go much lower, which is good. But the bad news is that the, a lot of the capacity metrics we use, like OTRI and like use truck prices, and uh, those things aren't going anywhere. So we feel that, yeah, it's good news that it can't go any lower, but it's bad news because it likely will stay here for, uh, for the foreseeable future. You know what good news is? Sonar 5.0 is out, and it's got a rate predictor. That's what's good news. <laughs> it is great news. So what is the rate predictor saying, though? Like, what is do, anything to look forward to coming into January, February? Uh, uh, should we be buying our, or if you're a carrier, should you be buying your kids that um, that PlayStation, you know, or, or that, or that, that uh, frozen that Switch? igloo that we spoke about last week? The frozen igloo? Or should you be putting down a deposit on a Cybertruck? Uh, I don't know about the Cybertruck. What do you I, think of the Cybertruck? I, I really want to not like it, but I yeah. kind of like it. Oh, you kind of do? I kind of yeah, like I, it. I kind of like, do, too. I, I want to drive a cool. triangle. I want to see him <laughs> in all black. You know, I think the, yeah. the sheet metal was... I kept I kept feeling like Elon was going to pull back the sheet metal and yeah. then actually be the real truck under Or Franz or was. Franz was or just something, a, a machine. And that, uh, I mean, and then especially when the glass broke, I thought this has got to be a joke. This this can't be uh, this can't be a real time. I know. Review. I but, think it's a setup. I, I mean, think it's a publicity stunt. It was and something. it worked. Yeah, I mean, it's got everybody talking. That's that's for sure. Yeah, that's that's my that's what I said. Um, anything else that we should take away from the fluctuating index? We got our three-month outlook. Uh, it's still at 40. We're still optimistic wow. that there can be some capacity leaving the market. We think uh, possibly uh, some of those owner ops that, that expanded their fleet uh, at the beginning of this year will see that, hey, it's really not worth it, and they'll sell off some of those trucks, and hopefully we'll see the used truck prices uh, come down a little bit, indicating that some of the capacity is leaving the market. We remain hopeful, but, uh, you know. We don't Carrier know. directs Peter Rentschler. JP, uh, what the truck original JP Hampstead were on the recent – Episode of uh, Great Quarter, guys, right? They were. JP uh, needs to, I have to edit the show. He needs to stand up. He needs to talk up a little bit. He needs to speak a little louder. Yeah. Can you he, let him know that? Told, yeah, I will tell him. People have told okay. me that he and I have that common uh, that common problem. Like not speaking. projecting yeah, enough? Yeah, you know, I either sit way back here or I get too close. So I got to yeah. find a middle ground there. It, it, it's all in the chest. I just, can see that. Kind you kind of body just, the, Yeah, you got to body it up. Yeah. You got to you gotta. Yeah, well, just kind of, you know, like think about yourself winning yeah. in cornhole with me on Friday. Yeah. And think about how, how excited and competitive you get. It and use that. I will, and I'm excited oh. to see out there what in a couple hours. Okay, all right, right man. I'm but, still not right. feeling so much for joining on, us today. Gotta, ah, I know. Gotta, wait, oh. hold on. You guys have a Twitter now. Which one of you runs that? We do. We we, we kind of run it together. I think oh. Seth probably takes the helm most of the time. He's uh, the one doing me. Seth, or is that you? Home uh, <laughs> takes the helm. Yeah, Seth. And it's funny. Seth thought that there were only 60 characters that you could allow, so he was kind of trying to play with it. And we were like, "Oh, hey, you get like five times that." So yeah, we, you know, we're trying to learn him the ropes of Twitter. He likes Twitter as a, like a news form. He doesn't really yeah. uh, tweet much in his own personal, but we're getting him there. Yeah. Big All right, stuff. good stuff. Right. How do the people follow it? What's the? Oh, uh, it's great quarter guys. So great, and then quarter Q T R, and then guys G U Y S. And I think it's great pod guys. Think uh, it's yeah, the name. Oh, I think it's at Great Quarter Guys Pod. Great Quarter Guys Pod, yes, yep. with uh, Quarter being QTR. Good thing you're in here with one of the producers. Right. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Nice right. stuff, <laughs> as always. And thank you for posting Drew on LinkedIn. Cox. I appreciate it. I wish more guests would share their, their appearance on, on, on the, uh, the internet. Right. By the way, this person named Emily Zink, she writes in, um, wow, 
a baby on the show. What's next? Well, Emily, there's a baby shower going on within the walls of Freight Waves. Uh, giving birth is one of the things now trending in supply chain. There's a party going on. Con- congrats- right yeah, congratulations to Nadine and Baby Walt's baby shower. It looks like the pizza has arrived too. We um, we'll see if we can get into that. We're not That's a uh, developing situation. Yes, we're not going to talk about that this week because we, we aren't sure if we're clear to. But we, maybe next week we'll talk about mm. something that occurred. Um, now let's let's get to something. Let's. Now trending in supply chain. Boom. All right. You know what we're talking about? The reason we're doing it now we're trending in supply chain is because there's a lot of news going on with Freight Waves TV. Right? Yes, it's very exciting. And if Emily Zink is listening, I know she's commenting. She can come in here and talk with us. Yeah. But feel, feel now free. trending in supply chain is, is the Freight Waves TV app. That is out now in the App Store, the Android Play Store. You can get it on your Roku I have it on my Apple TV 4K. It looks brilliant. It looks beautiful. Oh, I haven't done that yet. But I have downloaded the app, and I'm seeing it streaming in various uh, offices around the world. They're streaming instead of ESPN. They're streaming Freight Waves content. Yeah. Very exciting to see. You're like the Chris Berman of supply chain. Oh, if only. Now, who would you you like? Who do you like in yourself? The, The Tony Reale? Uh, well, no, I can't oh. take that. But, you know, we did try to fashion off the supply chain uh, at somewhat after, you know, the, the model of Tony yeah. Reale, uh and, you know, the thousands of episodes that they've done on Around the Horn, a nice program. I'm, I'm glad we- you mentioned off the supply chain. I'm a <laughs> multi-time champion, multi-time. Yeah. I'm wearing a... I'm wearing this today because if you watch today's episode, spoiler alert, I won and I set the it's, highest score in It's not in a spoiler. The, it's the been history. I, yeah, but with on-demand content, it kind of is. Nowadays, like online, you can't say things. Uh, you can't say the outcome of like a show. Oh. On there, there'll be like oh, yeah. spoilers on a thread. People get very yeah. mad because- I know. It makes me mad when people do that. I'm like- And I honor it. The one thing I want is like a sports score. It's like, come on, dude. I'm not. Nobody's waiting until you watch the, <laughs> the Super Bowl on DVR. Like we're yeah. talking about it now. Yeah, the Texans beat the Colts last night, 20 to Did they? I fell asleep during Sorry. that game. I know. That was yeah. so boring. I don't know. There's something about the AFC South. I'm, I'm just so- tired. It is It is kind of like the, uh, I it's don't know. It's like, it's like the AFL. Like, it's like, it seems like its own league. Yeah. it's it's. Uh, so, anyway, well, congratulations yeah. on setting that high score, 31 points. Mm-hmm. And I believe that starts off, that kicks off our, ne- our very second season. Oh. Officially, it counts as our second season. I, and uh, so we had uh, we completed twelve episodes of of one successful season. We got a little bit better each time. This is kicking us off. We've got brand new graphics for it, uh, and you know I just think that the content we're bringing, touching all points of the supply chain, is it's fun. It's debate. All the topics are constructed in a way that we can really debate them. It's not just you know having some panelists just riff on something what is know? uh so what do we have to look so what are some topics there are some shows that people may have to look yeah. forward to this, this well week? i'm glad you asked like we're we're thinking of right well the very next one we're about to film is uh china tensions rising oh all the different mm. ways that yeah. they're they're emerging and well of course the trade what's the latest on the trade war front to debate and you know things that touch on hong kong what about their ev uh, technology and how yeah. they've sort of cornered the market with batteries, uh, with the EV, with those batteries. Uh, what about their AI well, they have a lot of cyber taking over the world? Around there? Yes. Can we? Just Do you debate? know that they? This is really interesting yes. fact. China is creating a city to be as large as Chicago, where all the highways will be AI enabled. Yeah. Can you write? They can me, just do that. Can you write me a Tesla episode? Like, just do it all Tesla. So we can debate the truck. We can just talk about Tesla. That's a good one. All right. Well, I'll do will all be Tesla fun. one. I, they I will come They got the Gigafactory. Yeah, man. Okay. They, got the, they got the cyber truck. They got the cyber. What's <laughs> happening with the semi? <laughs> What's happening with the semi? Do they call it the semi just it, because they're incorrect, politically incorrect? Is everything things? going to look like a harsh shape now? <laughs> No telling. So uh, also, um, we're going to be talking about sustainability and IMO Ooh. 2020. Uh, we're going to be talking about like brokering both sides of the equation. Uh, yeah. Also, what about the talent shortage? We talk about the driver shortage. Well, oh, I think you meant on the show. No, I'm just kidding. There's plenty of talent <laughs> on there. <laughs> you got me there. Uh, but and also, 
The Last Mile Final Frontier. Yeah. You know, that could be a fun topic as Final well. Final Frontier. And maybe the legalities. We've been, like, now that we talked to Cassandra Gaines, yeah. like, I felt like we've cracked open sort of that legal coconut. And we see there's an audience <laughs> for it. And it demands. The legal that coconut. Is the, uh, she was, when she was on Insiders, she was like, no one's going to listen to this legal one. It's, it's, and I'm like, I think this is, not only is this going good, it's really interesting and it has this sort of better call Saul, but better call cast <laughs> vibe to it. We're talking about the Uber for goons, developing that. So yeah. you can just get a goon on demand. Like, if someone owes you money, you could just pull out like your app and you could be like, all right, come and take care of this for me. Um, so like a goon broker, I think that that's something that there's a, there's an op- a market opportunity for if you're listening out there. Uh, attorneys can be, uh, you know, like they can be sort of like engineers. You, you can have a certain type of attorney yeah. who's very dry and fact based, but you can have like you can have the that was uh, one of the types. losers on off the supply chain walking. Oh, around. wow. I just, it just feels good. When you, the, you, know, <laughs> in the economy. you guys really competed well, though. I know he was he wasn't the one who thought you could return a pool, though. He wasn't the one. I, I think that, that was Falkenberry. Oh, yeah, I think he started that one. Yeah, yeah and yeah. then okay. I love uh, David, but I, I just don't think you're going to return a pool by mail. N- hmm. Not even, not even one of those above ground. What, what you about know what's interesting about the law too? Like the the lawyers, they know a lot of private investigators, so they're like in that Ooh. sort of underworld. Phil Moody. Yeah. In that oh. underworld too. Oh, it's Phil Moody. I wonder what he would like to talk about. Okay. Hey, hey Phil, you're Phil? on about the truck. How you doing? Phil. Oh. Do you think he pocket dialed us? Oh, possibly. Well, that's all right. Chief. Is he? Uh, Phil? Chief. Chief. I don't um, know. Maybe he pocket dialed us. I don't hear him. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. we Phil, it's let it be known that we will answer the phone for you, even yeah. if we are on live national broadcast. We'll do it anytime someone comes in. So what was the other thing? The Inside the Box. Inside the Box premiered yesterday, 9 a.m. Yeah. You and I did the, uh, you're the producer on the show. We did a location scout with uh, the great Nick Friend, who was doing all the... the Man, of- his talent for like for this filming, some of the production really came out. He really took charge. Uh, he, he would do these fun things where like, he would have me like walk in a certain like position and, and then he would film me from one direction and then I'd walk, he'd film me from another, he'd film me from another. And then he was like, I just did a three camera shot with you doing that. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, and so then you get the angles. Uh, it was fun in Chicago. We that was our pilot episode. We we took check this out. We filmed. We gathered four hours worth of material, uh, drone footage, footage inside the Montgomery Ward, but footage around Chicago, and four hours for a <laughs> eight minute hey, video. Come on in. Come on in. Say hello. We're talking about Freight Waves like TV right now. Did, President did, did George you, Abernathy. Did, did Dooner win another gold chain? Or <laughs> is this just one from weeks behind? <laughs> no. This is me doing my chat impression. Oh no, <laughs> oh, that is oh, not God, right. I, you've got work to do on that one. Okay, we'll 30, do a little bit more Dooner. Where's the where is the damn cowbell? Here it is. Yeah, do it. Come yeah. on, give us a little bit. This is the man who, you sat in the wolf's den. You you interviewed the wolf of Wall Street. Thanks. Thanks for the uh, crash in our party, George Abernathy, president. He's very very sarcastic. He's very sarcastic sometimes. You know why? Because he is like... Like me, uh, I well, I'm not going to call him a masshole. I'll say that I'm a masshole, <laughs> and some people from from that area tend to be that way. No, George, oh, awesome. and you can you can only call each other that, right? George Nobody, awesome. you, can, Dude, you can, I can't call you a I, masshole. Only you, no, you can, you can. Oh, fine. I can't. You can, oh, you can, because nice. uh, okay. we know each other. <laughs> I won't call the goon broker on you. No, it's cool though because this baby shower is going on. We're getting like everybody cycling in. We just yeah, had, it's uh, cr- it's a crazy day today. Yeah, we're just uh, around here in the baby. There's Broke floor. with her baby. Yeah, hey, she gonna come in? Come on in quickly. Henry Mills making another appearance. Henry Mills, future Freight Waves TV star. Brooke Fuller and Henry Mills. How are you guys? We doing? are live. We just just have the basic. We are inside uh, yeah. the the podcast booth. Oh, he's come back. He was in briefly, but he we were in the like middle of the phone call. He looks like a natural. He does. Yeah. Look at those blue eyes. Although all babies' eyes start off blue, right? And yes. they change a little bit. They can, yeah. Another baby fact: your eyes never get any bigger. So that's as big as like his eyes will ever get. Really? Wow. Yeah, that's why they kind of look like your your head doesn't get that much bigger either. I mean, yours yours has gotten a <laughs> yeah, little bit bigger little since bit. you got here, that. but. Yeah. Um, but no, it's uh, great to have you on, Brooke. Uh, anything that you want to say to uh, you know the world? Um, I don't know. Go Freightwaves. How was the uh, baby shower? It was beautiful. Great. It was <laughs> the next generation of freight is is rolling in. We love to have new Freightwaves babies. Yeah, oh. fantastic new, new Freightwaves freight babies. Yeah. That's right, celebrating each and every day, the young and the old, and. Uh, so fantastic yep. to Thanks have you guys us. in. You. Ready? Say bye-bye. 
Say bye. Bye. <laughs> And Speaking good news of, that everything got resolved out there. There's a little bit of drama. Yeah, that, that's so. great too. Speaking <laughs> of uh, inside the truth booth, inside the box, you know, yeah. the inside the box show was an idea of Craig Fuller's. Uh, he was like, let's make it, let's make something crib style. Remember Cribs yeah. from MTV? And uh, it, it had kind of, it had the style and a panache. Uh, and even though it did start around, I think the early 2000s, yeah. it actually still does survive to this day. But you know what's but, funny? Yeah. Like, my, my wife, she said to me that, she's like, wow, the opening reminds me very much of Anthony Bourdain. And I said, well, thank you, because that's what we were kind of going for. I, I was getting to that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I, yeah, as you and I kind of planned it out in that very first trip up, we were like, yeah. We want it to be stylish like that. We also want it to be non corporate e. We want it to be cult- truly cultural, the city that we visit, as well as the cultures of the amazing logistics companies that we're going to be covering. And we were like, what's the best way to do it? We really admire the late, great, really talented Anthony Bourdain and his style and his a- casual approach and the way he had knowledge of the places that he went to and he studied up on him. He was a really brilliant guy. Of course. Very inspiring to us. And you tried to like you tried to flex your vocabulary a little bit. I think you were like, Chicago's a palpable environment. <laughs> <laughs> palpable. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. I don't know. Some sometimes that just comes out. I don't know if I was showing off or not, but I No, uh, no, 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 no. You weren't. A, you weren't. I like um, the bucket guy too. I just like I thought that brought in a nice flavor. It was that sort of very um yeah. no reservations kind of style. Like set the scene, show the area what people who go to work because it's not just about the building, it's about the culture, the architecture, the inside and the outside. It's yeah. called the inside the box. The way that we think outside the box, but yeah. what is literally happening within those walls inside the box? What's happening you know? in our comment section? Let's get to comment section rodeo now, yes. but download the so, Freight Waves TV app. Also, you can catch those episodes right where you are if you're on YouTube or LinkedIn or, or um, what, Facebook? Yeah, yeah right. the videos social are media streaming. So scroll on the video, what about Instagram? click the video button. No. Uh, we ain't on Insta. No. We're on TikTok. Oh, what the truck podcast TikTok on TikTok. All right. Now we're going to hear from you. We're running a little long here and there's pizza waiting for us. So we are going to get to our little favorite segment. Comment section rodeo. No. Oh. oh, and there, there goes Emily Zanks. Always late to the party. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So, all right, here it is from the article. The camera sees all. So this is all about the camera uh, doing, you know, Big Brother's watching. He's in your cab now if you're a right. truck driver, and he's getting on your case. Phone if you're usage. Using the smoking phone. in the you're cab. You're smoking a butt, right? If you're smoking a butt in there. It's going to trigger a driver alert. It's going to trigger the alert. It's like when you hold your door open for so long. So Robert C. said, the problem is when the industry starts using them, it gets pushed as mandatory without resistance. This is how e-logs got pushed on us all. Yep, I can understand that feeling, of course. I am. What do you think about cameras in the cab? We have camera in a booth on us right now, but that's that's intentional. <laughs> right? I don't know if, like, at our desk, I would want my webcam constantly streaming Look, to everybody. I think if I'm a driver, I'm a hating it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. But, you know, you can, I think you can feel it coming. Insurance company is going to be, coming. you got a carrier is going to be it. wanting to, you know, get those rates down, anything we can do. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, Ken Robinson uh, says, "I are this is this is his his workarounds with Ken, right. Ken Robinson. I are lighting will blind the camera and perhaps even destroy the optics eventually. None of these cameras like I are or even." LED lights. Blind the effing things. If the company tells you you can't do that, wear the lights as religious jewelry and tell them you are offended by their cameras and cameras are considered evil. Just convince them you're Amish and cameras are against your religion. It pro- prohibits any photos being taken of you. So, creative yeah. workarounds. Or like if you're a vampire, you can't show up on camera. That would be, I guess, one way, right? But if, well, that would be easily, I mean... That would be like, oh wait, he's a vampire? Yeah, but then they can't just fire you because you're a vampire. That would be discrimination. No, but I mean, it, like, it's if you're invisible, then you're invisible. But if you're visible, you're visible. So you can't really. You no, know. like can't, vampires don't show up in mirrors. Or right. don't you know anything about vampires? Yes, horror? they. But if what I, my point is, if they showed up on the camera as soon as they showed up, then well, they you wouldn't know show up. That, That's the whole point. Then you would know they were a vampire <laughs> once you didn't see them and the car's well, what driving. What do they do? Like film an empty cab ahead of time and then roll that. No, well, I'm talking drove. about like so. You a vampire gets a, gets his CDL right, and he's sitting oh, in so, the truck, and he's driving his so truck. So vampires will be okay. And, well, he, the camera. All I'm saying is that he wouldn't show up on camera. Okay, so he wouldn't care. Right. Okay. So for I guess vampires, he was on a phone. You would okay. just see like a phone floating. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. So vampires out there, you have nothing to worry about. Uh, 
That's all I'm trying to get apart here. Okay. I see. For, from the article, multi-purpose apps can protect against digital overload. Gear Jammer 0258 says these apps have little to no benefit to the carriers. They still call. Extortion of data is the name of the game. Data is the gold rush. However, most companies just collect it without any idea what they're going to use it for or sell it to third parties. Oh, you don't want to use our app? We won't offer quick pay. Remember, folks, you can't build an autonomous network without a virtual outlay of the roads. So essentially, we're putting ourselves out to work, building the network for them for free. The thing that I find the most annoying is it should be the small carriers offering their location through the Glimpse app or whenever they choose. So we control the data. UBS, FedEx, etc. Don't download my app so I can track them. But the double standard holds strong. Well, he sounds somewhat informed on, on the issue. I, He's kind of uh, right, but I think yeah. like it's sort of... It's sort of like how Google was a search engine, but they became the biggest advertising company in the world, and they did that by figuring out where we search, where we drive, where we go, and, and they're everywhere with us. They were sued for 170 billion, but that's chump change. Uh, George, on the same topic, says, "Lol, this guy has GPS that's interactive, a Qualcomm that is indicating various info while driving, such such as time left to drive, and possibly a second GPS. You can eat a burger, have something to drink, change the radio station." However, you can't dial a phone. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I think that most of us would agree that, like, you can dial hands-free, I guess, right? You can be like, Siri, call mom. Well, I have to say that, like, when I'm eating a burger and I'm, like, kind of driving with my knee for yeah. a minute, I can't dial the phone at the same time. They used to, you know, like, remember Sky Mall? Uh, I, I remember the name. Like, in the airplane, they used to have, like, the oh, magazine right. with, like, stupid Oh, yeah, of product. course. I, I like that. Yeah. yeah, me too. And I miss it. Like, it used to, like, an hour of my flight would just be reading Sky Mall. Right. And now, like, I don't have that. But... They have the other magazine, which is okay, but like Sky Mall was like always. I always felt like I was on the Shark Tank, like what, reading Sky Mall, and I'd be like, "Yeah, this product has legs," or like, "This is." Shout out to Sky Mall. Well, they're gone. They're out of business. I know. So, but what they had in there was this driving bib, and you could attach it to your steering wheel. So, like when you're eating your burger, it wouldn't get all over you. But my, I always thought like but if you failing turn, that, if you turn too quick, like maybe you could strangle yourself. Yeah. Or I had breakaway. I wonder if that happened. Someone died. Well. I guess so. Oh, ooh, Teamsters. Okay, here's another one. Teamsters. Port and rail drivers defend AB5's limits on independent contractors. So we've seen a lot against AB5, right? So right. this article was talking about how Teamsters were for it. And Stephen Webster, he says, California had to something to stop. And we don't edit had anything to, here. Had to do something. Had to. California had to, you think, do should go in there? So yeah. if you're an editor, you'd be like, do. Yeah. Okay. Had, had to do something to stop the large cost of the state. The cost is over $100 million a year. Quebec spent over $40 million in the four years. Ontario has homeless shelters with many former truck drivers in them. The ATA in the U.S. and the CTA in Canada. Ontario, Canada has a huge problem with U.S. trunking companies not paying hospital bills of leased offs to hospitals in Canada. Ace Insurance Company is one of the biggest offenders. Quebec is considering rules like California. A coalition of churches in both Canada and the U.S. is tired of picking these destroyed lives for the benefit of large trucking companies and insurance companies. Okay, fair enough. And uh, on the same topic, no Joni Garcia Herrera says, if these so-called independent contractors get their own authority to operate a B5 will not affect them. They choose to lease onto companies, therefore affecting their current situation come January 1st, 2020. If they choose to work for less than minimum wage, why complain after expenses? Move on and look elsewhere or just become an employee. They will make more as an employee than a so-called independent contractor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Fair enough. I, um, yeah, I'm not going to state an opinion on that one. From the article, UPS will not agree to money back guarantees if third parties use tracking data. Reality Check says UPS and FedEx, and this is a, this really kind of was an interesting story, right? Yeah. How they're, they're kind of just trying to take control and be like, well, these are under terms and conditions. So Reality Check, he writes, UPS and FedEx don't want third parties because they are pushing back against the unrealistic delivery expectations of the public and shippers who act as if they can order something at midnight and get it at dawn the same day. Then punish carriers when that doesn't happen, even though some third party said it could. Amazon created a ridiculous monster with the idea of free shipping, which actually meant carriers had to choke down unfair delivery fees and unrealistic loads and demands on drivers. Enough is enough. If your business was built on exploiting major carriers, then you should go the way of the dinosaurs because business can be psychopaths too. Whoa! Yeah. Is wins by dropping a gauntlet. I mean, I don't know. Business is good, I think. Booming. Uh, and this is... Late package? Yeah. Deal with it, FedEx and UPS. 
Uh, this, uh, this person uh, writes... The carriers continue to dilute the value of their own money-back guarantee program. Ground parcels shipped between Thanksgiving and Christmas have zero guarantees. It will get there when it gets there. Parcels shipped by plane have extended delivery times a week and a half before Christmas. Have you ever called FedEx to request a refund? You better have all your ducks in a row because it's question after question after question. Yes, you can request a refund online, but their system is often down. Ironic? Have you ever called UPS to request a Don't refund? Ha! You will be re- educating the person on the other line. If you need your if you need your pricing changed with FedEx, they will automatically waive your money back guarantee privilege without your consent. When you bring this to the sale rep's attention, they will play stupid and say something like, "I didn't even know." Did you know that FedEx and probably UPS reps are advised to take away your money back guarantee and offer you better upfront discounts? Here's the deal. If UPS and FedEx are so weird about their own money back program, they should just take it away and not guarantee anything. Or they should just apply you a credit without anyone requesting it. Doubt that will ever happen, though. Nah. You want me to tell you something that really cool that happened with UPS one time? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I I sold um, a, a, a guitar I bought in 1998, a Takamani. I'd used it a lot, and I sold it to this dude. Oh, is that Steve Vise? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and no, he used way cooler guitars than this. And it and uh, I package it up, and it gets to the guy, and it's been like crushed. It's like been like something's like sm- smacked it a little bit. And it's cracked. The guy's really mad. He said that I didn't package it right or whatever. He filed a complaint to get his money, his four hundred dollars back. They UPS refunded him the money. Mm. They sent the guitar back to me. And I got I got my four hundred dollars from the original payment, so I got four hundred dollars and I got my guitar back, even though it was just cracked. Wow! I was like, this is the guitar that wants to come home. You know, that's the customer service that uh, that we need. Your boomerang guitars. Yeah. All right, so, so guys out there, uh, to, just to wrap it up, thank you for joining us on this weekend edition. Go on, f- follow, subscribe to Freight Guys. You on all of Freight Waves podcasts. We've been putting out a ton lots of content. of content. We the Freight Waves the Events podcast. That's one you can you can also follow. But on uh, every day, we've been putting out another keynote from that, another speaker session. All these wonderful. You've things. You've been busy. I've been busy. There's uh, we did a port report yesterday. Myself, Laura, and Henry, which was uh, very exciting. We did the uh, the port report. We talked about counterfeit goods. And misclassifications costing people hundreds of thousands of dollars, billions of dollars. So check that one out. It's it's something that if you're a shipper and if you're a broker, this is something that happens all the time. When I was in FTN, people just would not care about the HDS numbers. They, they just wanted shipments to go through. Well, what happens is if you get audited, customs comes after you and they want to get paid. And then you got to call. Uh, you better call Cass. Better call. Better call Saul. Yeah. Better call somebody. Uh, another, I think a for freight sake is going to come out today. We, I think there's one scheduled to be recorded for a little goodness bit later sakes. today. Yeah, and there's also one that we did that's up on the network from uh, Freightways Live Chicago, which I can't believe was already a week ago. But man. meanwhile, download that Freightways Waves TV, TV app. app. Check out all the everyone's content. doing it. This show, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, everywhere podcasts are heard around, around the, world. the world. Follow us on social. Follow him at Chad Prevost. Follow me at Timothy Dooner. That's D double O N E R. Let's pull the car to the station. A little cowbell for vampire truckers, man. Shut up. Like, if a vampire, if a vampire, we just got pizza right there in the middle of the show. Hey, hey, hey a pizza for the baby shower. Pizza, Woo. Pizza. We're getting served in here. Stop Jimmy. I love Jimmy. Come on in a second. Jimmy, say goodbye to the people out there. This is Jimmy. He's one of the Shut great out. audio people. The video, the audio for us. Man, never has to complain. He just loves being here. And delivering pizza. And he delivers pizza, and he man. Turns- Woo. For you, little cowbell for Nadine and Wolf. Little cowbell for everybody who tuned in. Have an amazing and wonderful and great weekend. On what the the truck? truck! Woo! Woo!